Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. Hi, I'm astronaut Frank Rubio, and today we're going to be reading Tickets to Space by Adrian Romberger. So Miss Romberger works as a guide at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and she's been interested in space since she was a kid. And so this is her way of telling you about how excited she is about space and hoping that you too can get excited about space, science, technology, engineering, and math, and maybe someday one of you guys will get to go to space. So I am a crew member of Expedition 68 and 69 on board the International Space Station. I've been here for about nine months, and uh, I really enjoy reading up here. Uh, sometimes I read a little bit longer books than this, uh, but it's a lot of fun to read in weightlessness. So um, yeah, we'll start. And I don't know if you guys want to read sideways or with me down there, but uh, we'll try both and see how you guys like it. All right, Ticket to Space by Adrian Romberger. To the Outer Space Center, on one special day, young Rocky and his grandma set off on their way. Kind of looks like they're at the uh, Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Hey, Grandma, asked Rocky, can I fly to the stars? Is it silly to dream of a visit to Mars? Absolutely not, replied Grandma. Not silly at all. I had the same dreams when I was so small. But they laughed at me, Rocky, laughed right in my face, my teacher and friends, when I talked about space. Rocky asked, you talked about space? What did you say? That they made fun of you in a not a nice way. She replied, my Nana told me on that very day that sometime in the future, I'd be on my way. To space, she meant Rocky, but no people had been. So when I told my whole class, they laughed and they grinned. But now things are different, said Grandma, pointing to the rockets that gleamed. And after today, Rocky, you'll see what I mean. But first, Grandma told Rocky her favorite space story of a brave little rocket who also dreamed of glory. Like Rocky and Grandma, he hoped to fly to space too, and he'd bring with him people just to check out the view. It's a pretty cool view up here, so I could see why they would want to do that. Not long after the day, Grandma was laughed at in class. The very first people went to space with a blast. These rockets had taken them, first one by one, adding rockets and astronauts, space travel had begun. Now these old timers are a thing of the past. They showed the way forward, the time's gone so fast. They stand proud, they stand proud like a forest with other great rockets. Each has a story down deep in their pockets. They seem to be talking when no one's around. Memories still linger up high off the ground. Old Merck was nodding as he stood so tall. It was 1961, whispered Merck. We had such a ball. Recalling old times, Merck was dreaming again about he and his astronaut and where they had been. It was a glorious day. Our country was proud. I took one of them to space and wow, it was loud. Just then, Merck was startled by a rocket making a fuss. He flew beside Merck and called himself Gus. Gus zoomed up to Merck on a short little flight and yelled, watch this Merck, I'm right at your height. Gus bragged, I take off like an airplane and I land like one too. I can float like a bumblebee. I'm really quite new, but I want to go higher to space towards the sun and take people with me who will buy a ticket for fun. Merck explained to Gus, you're a fast little pup, zigzagging is fine, but you have to go up, in this case down, but I've been trying, moaned Gus, but I just need more zoom. Have you any ideas to get me towards the moon? Merck sent Gus to Jim Gemini who flew two folks at a time. With those two heads together, wow, could Jim climb. 
Gus followed Jim Gemini after zooming around. Hey, Jim, called Gus. How'd you get two off the ground? Gus, said Jim Gemini, you've got the wrong gas. You need lighter fuel to go high and go fast. With that happy news, Gus sped on his way, passing an STS spaceship sitting proudly on display. Space shuttles were grand. They flew 30 years, over and over again, each launched new frontiers. Gus continued, his, Gus continued to his launch pad to get new fuel in his tank, but on his way there, his heart nearly sank. Gus passed mighty Zor, a new rocket so tall. Where you going, grumbled Zor. Don't slip, don't fall. Getting new fuel, answered Gus. Then I'll reach the stars, but mighty Zor scolded. You'll never get far. I may look new to you, Gus, but I've been around for some time. You can't compete with big rockets. You're way out of line. But Gus shared his dreams, how he'd ride into space. He would launch and land safely and could keep up the pace. Buzz off, bellowed Zor. Big deal you can hover. Only pros go to space, but for you, don't bother. You're just a squirt, Gus, so dinky and small. You don't have the right stuff, and not nearly as tall. So go away, little rocket. Leave space legends alone. You taking people to space? Give up and go home. Gus was so sad. Zor may just be right. Gus was quite little. He couldn't match Zor's might. Gus flew around crying. Tears fell with no sound. Then he passed a huge rocket lying down on the ground. It was grand old Apollo, the biggest rocket he'd met. Then Apollo called out, Hey, you're getting me wet. This kind giant rocket, Gus zoomed up beside him. The tears were still falling and Gus tried hard to hide them. What's the trouble, little fellow? Apollo wanted to know. Can I help you somehow from feeling so low? I want to do it, cried Gus, take people to space, but they tell me I can't, that I'm a disgrace. Is that all, sighed Apollo? They told me that too. They said I was too big, but they had no clue. I took folks to the moon. We were scared, it was tense, but we did it, my friend. The mission was immense. You'll need more than fuel and all the right parts. It takes practice and work and a whole lot of heart. The smart folks who built you are great at science, engineering, and math. They'll know just how to help Gus, and will put you on the right path. With these words from his hero, Gus really swelled with pride. It would not be long now until he'd have his ride. So Gus practiced and tested, flying higher and steady, until the big day when he knew he was ready. And that day is today, Rocky, Grandma said with a grin. I've bought us two tickets. Take a giant leap. Let's get in. Rocky couldn't believe it. They were going to space. He and his grandma right here from this place. Huh? Can you imagine going to space camp and all of a sudden you get to go to space? That'd be pretty cool. And Gus, the little rocket, launched his very first flight, taking Grandma and Rocky. It was so out of sight. They flew off together, way up from the ground, where the stars were around them, and there's no up, and no down. We'll just stay up here for a little bit. As they gazed out the window and the blue earth below, Grandma held Rocky's hand and they floated so low. Rocky smiled at Grandma, knowing all you've got to do is believe in yourself. Your dreams do come true. The end. But just the beginning for you. All right. That was a great book. Thank you, Miss uh, Adrian Romberger, for uh, the great pictures and the great story. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care. Thank you for joining us for Storytime from Space. We hope you enjoyed our story today from the International Space Station. 
We hope you'll join us again soon for another book reading or for one of our science experiments. Until next time, we look forward to reading together again soon.